Hello. Our objective with this video is to derive an expression for the current in <coughs> flowing drain to source in the MOSFET transistor from fundamental principles. And so current, if we go to the, to the definition, is rate of change of charge, which we can approximate as rate of change in charge over time. So with that, let's say, well, let's find an expression for the charge and then time and then try to find the expression for the current. So how much charge do we have flowing? Uh, remember from the previous video that the way the device operates, the Philefeld transistor, is that as we increase the voltage gate to source and we deposit positive charge, we get a an inversion layer, we are attracting electrons. So here the P, the holes go away and we attract electrons under the, the gate. We add some more charge, we increase the voltage, we attract more. If the gate voltage is more than the threshold voltage, we are creating basically a channel. Okay. Call this one N channel. So we have a material, so as we increase the voltage drain to source, we have electron movement. And the conductance in this channel is dependent on the voltage gate to source. So the more voltage, the bigger the channel, the more conductance. So this charge, this looks like a capacitor. We have metal, oxide, and semiconductor. We have charges at the gate, charges in the semiconductor, and, a and a <clears throat> an insulator, an oxide here, right? And so, if you recall, the expression for the charge in a capacitor is what? C times voltage, right? And so, well, let let's just do a quick review of capacitors. So we have a plate of the capacitor, and then here we have the other plate of the capacitor. This is the distance, right? We know that the capacitance in a capacitor is proportional to the area, and best proportional to the distance, and then you have the permittivity of the material, okay? That is material dependent. In our case, it's oxide, so we could say permittivity of the oxide. So let's go with that. What is the capacitance? We have permittivity of the oxide. The area will be the width times the length. Right? This is the length of the transistor, or the channel, and then the length, and the width. And then the distance is the thickness of the oxide thickness of the oxide, times the voltage. What is the voltage that we have? Well, for very low values of BDS, we can neglect them, the voltage will be BGS, voltage gate to source, minus BT, right? So for this is for very low voltages. So we have that the charge that we are working with, we could find an expression as Permittivity of the oxide divided by thickness of the oxide, width times length, and then BGS minus BT, neglecting the voltage drain to source for very small ones. Okay, so this is this part here. What about the time? It takes for an electron here to go to the other side. Well, this is going to be the length of the channel divided by the velocity of the, of the carrier. So we have length. In this case, the velocity, this is a charged carrier that are free electrons, so we know that this mu n over the times the electric field. And so we have L, mu n, and what is the electric field? The electric field is proportional to the voltage, and that's proportional to the distance, which in this case is the length. So we have 
voltage drain to source divided by the distance L or L square divided by mu N, the mobility of free electrons, PVS. Okay, so we have the denominator. Again, remember what we are trying to do. We are trying to find an expression for the current. Current is movement of charge. Right? So we have an electron here going over there. Movement of charge. So we find the charge and then divided by the time to find the expression for the current. So we have that ID <coughs> is equal to divide one by the other and we get mu n times permittivity of the oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide with and then length divided by length we cancel one length but we over length BGS minus VT so I'm looking at this expression and divided by this expression times BDS and we got it so this is an expression for a small VDS once VGS is greater than BT, otherwise you have no current, you are in cutoff. This is the, if we have VDS and this is the current, is this linear relationship. If you, if you see, you have IV equals a constant here, which is a conductance times VDS. Okay, so linear. Now, this linear relationship between the current and the drain and the voltage drain to source, the conductance depends on the voltage gate to source. This, the conductance of this material is voltage control. The more voltage gate to source you put, the bigger the channel, the more it conducts. And so, as you for low voltages drain to source, you get less current. You increase the voltage gain to source, higher currents. This goes up with voltage gain to source as it increases, as you can see here. We can also see that as expected, it is going to be proportional to the width so more width in the transistor, more current, inverse proportional to the length, proportional to the permittivity of the material. So you want a high current, you need to use here a material that has high permittivity. We use silicon oxide. We want to make it very thin. The thinner you make it, the more current you get. And this is just the mobility of the carriers. Okay, so this expression works for low values of BDS, um, if you increase the BDS, then over here when we put the voltage, we cannot neglect it. And so let's do that. As BDS increases, the amount of current that we have of charge is C times V. C is again, a capacitor, so it's going to be oxide width times length divided by thickness of the oxide, and we have VGS minus VT minus, as we increase this voltage, we have to consider it, right? If we consider the midpoint, the average, so the voltage BDS here, and here it will be zero, and here it will be BDS. In the middle, it will be one half BDS. So we could, we could linearly do this approximation, one half BDS. And so if we do that, this divided by the time, which we already de derived before, which is L squared derived by mu n times BDS, gives us an IV, of mu n 
permittivity of the other side over thickness of the oxide width over length and then we have BGS minus BT minus one half BDS times BDS. So the only thing is that we have included this term here, which accounts for the fact that eventually this starts, you multiply this BDS with this BDS, it gives you this minus one half BDS squared that accounts for this inverse parabolic behavior exhibited. Now what happens at pinch off? We already mentioned in the previous video that as you keep increasing this voltage, well, it turns out that in the neighborhood of the drain, the differential voltage between the gate and the drain, when the voltage drain to source equals BGS minus BT, eventually is zero. So what's happening to the channel is that first is like this, keeps decreasing until pinch off. So it looks like that. Again, voltage gate to source, high voltage differential, so big channel here, voltage gate, gate to drain, very small, so small channel there. And so at that point, it pinches off and you reach the saturation where the current drain to source is largely independent of further voltage drain to source, okay? And so what is the expression in this case? Well, we can derive it. If we substitute BDS, in this case equal to BGS minus BT into this equation, we find that IDS is equal to mu N permittivity of the oxide over thickness of the oxide with over length BGS minus BT minus one half BDS, which we are going to substitute for BGS minus BT times BDS, which we need to substitute again with BGS minus BT. And so what you see here, BGS minus BT minus one half BGS minus BT is one half BGS minus BT. So we can bring the one half down and we get one half mobility of the electrons, thickness of the oxide, permittivity of the oxide, width to length, BGS minus BT square, which shows that the current is independent of the voltage gain to source drain to source and only dependent quadratically in the voltage gate to source. So with this, we have the behavior that we expected, voltage drain to source, current drain to source. Initially, we start linearly. That's the relationship that we derived before. IV equals mu n E oxide, T oxide, proportional to the width, inverse proportional to the length, BGS minus BT minus one half BDS times BDS. And then for higher voltages, we get this expression here. Where this, this is for a voltage gate to source one, voltage gate to source two, they are quadratically related. Now, something else that happens is that as you keep increasing the voltage gate to source, this depression region keeps increasing and you actually are pinching off even there is a region where you have no channel. Effectively, what's going to happen is that you are going to have some increase in the current for increases of voltage drain to source, okay? You have a channel length modulation effect. This is equivalent to, in BJT transistors, the early voltage. If you keep expanding, projecting these lines, they get to a point, which is the early voltage in a BJT, or BA here, and this accounts for the fact 
that you do not have infinite output impedance while do looking at the transistor from the drain. Thank you.